Thank you, Jise, for taking your time off to be interviewed. Singaporeans are interested to know about your participations in uh, general elections and presidential election. I have a few questions for you. What motivated you to take part in the presidential election in 2011 after your failure in GE 2011? Thank you, Chris, for giving me this opportunity. You know, the presidential and general elections are two different platforms. But the underlying motivation for me to go into both elections is the same. I have been concerned with social justice since I was young. I was born into a very poor family. My father was what they call a kopi kia, making coffee in a coffee shop for customers. And my mother was a washerwoman. We literally live from hand to mouth. They earn only a few dollars a day and they have got nine children to feed and raise. So it was tough. And, you know, all nine children plus the two parents were sleeping together in just one room. And all of us would row over each other when we were asleep. And it was tough. And in the morning, we have to just scramble for the wash basin and the toilet um, before going to school and making our own breakfast. So much so that my parents had to do their toilet business in the evening before they go to sleep. They, they literally have to force themselves, force the system, the body system to do so. So it was tough, but we learned. We work together as a family. Very, my sisters take, different, take part in different chores, help us. Some were doing their ironing, washing, drying the clothes, delivering the clothes. All of us had a role. I remember going with my sister to deliver clothes to our customers, uh, going from house to house. So it was tough, but we fought our way through. And I was very fortunate to be given a scholarship to study abroad. I would never have been able to go to university without the government scholarship. And I am grateful for that. And I am also grateful for them giving me a good job in the civil service. But this gratitude to the government does not stop me from noticing that there were still a lot of social injustices around. And it is because of these social injustices that I have decided to come out to articulate my views on this. Who else would know better than someone who has been intimately involved in government uh, policy making and monitoring of society. So I thought that I could play a role. That is why I have come out to participate in both the presidential and general election, seizing whatever opportunity that is afforded to articulate, to fight for my cause. Now. You are back to take part in GE 2015. Singapore, some Singaporeans see you as an opportunist. How do you respond to that? In Singapore, the there are very few platforms for alternative views to be expressed. The, me the media, the public media is dominated by the government. Day in, day out, you hear nothing but the views of the government on issues as though there is only one view in this world and there is only one solution to all these problems. But life is not just that. Life has many views, many perspectives and many solutions. So it is because of this that the, the election, the general elections and the president elections are important opportunities, important forums for us to seize the, to, to make use of, to tell Singaporeans what alternative views there are and what alternative solutions there are. That is why I have gone into these elections. There are only two platforms in Singapore to say our piece, to tell Singaporeans what's wrong and what are the possible solutions. So, why did you not join any existing opposition party? Why is there a need to form a new party? I did try my very best to join an existing party. In fact, that was my top priority 
soon after the presidential election. But things didn't work out. Uh, there were differences, there were obstacles in the way, such as differences of opinion among leaders of the parties. So in order not to sow discord among these leaders, I decided that the best way is to go out and form my own party with like-minded people. Okay. In the coming elections, what are the issues that you are focusing on? Well, there have been a lot of social and economic issues in the past and in the present, but they have been magnified in the last 10 years by the huge influx of foreign workers into Singapore. The first 40 years were fantastic. There, was, there were jobs, there were some bad years, but on the whole, the, last, the first 40 years were good. There was growth, there was jobs, there was social mobility. But the last 10 years under this present Prime Minister, things have been, problems have been magnified many fold with his liberal emission of foreign workers. Over 1 million foreign workers over 10 years, in 10 years. So this sudden influx, this huge influx of foreign workers has caused so many problems to us. They have taken away jobs that our Singaporeans are in, involved in, the PMETs have lost their jobs, the, the, the cleaners, workers, everywhere, even the delivery boys at McDonald's have been replaced by foreign workers. Our parking attendants have also been replaced by foreigners. So we have, Singaporeans have lost jobs to foreigners. And our wages have suffered as a result. Wages have kept coming down. Because these foreign workers come from countries where the wage levels were so much lower, not only that, they have also caused us to lose our space. Our space in housing, in hospitals, the queues in hospitals are so long and there are so limited spaces, so many limited beds that, you know, the waiting period just been stretched. And then there is this space in public transport, MRTs keep on breaking down, places in school for our students, Places, there are, what, 20 to 30 percent of our places taken away by foreigners whom the government spend $400 million on every year in foreign scholarship and tuition grants. So our, our own Singaporean students suffered in loss of places and in taking up student loans to go to university. So these problems are there. They have taken away our jobs, they have depressed our wages, they have taken our places in so many place, uh, areas. And as a result, our esteem has gone down. It is because of all these issues that we are going in to, 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 articulate, to fight, to, to tell the people that this is wrong and this policy to add pressure on the government to change these policies for the good of the people. Sorry to ask you this question. If you fail again, would you be planning to return to contest in the next presidential election? I don't think so, unless there are no suitable candidates coming out. But I'm sure there will be suitable candidates coming out to contest the presidential election. So my answer is un very unlikely. I would like to take this opportunity to tell Singaporeans, some of whom have felt that I have been a spoiler and an opportunist by contesting in the presidential election. I want to assure these Singaporeans that I am not. I am not a spoiler, neither am I an opportunist. But to those of you who still think that I am, that I am a spoiler and an opportunist, I want to say sorry. The last few weeks have shown that Sing First, my party has done our very best to avoid three corner fights in constituencies which are considered relatively easy for the opposition. And we have given up these constituencies that we are interested in, even in order to avoid three corner fights, even if it means having to go to areas, tougher areas like Tanjong Paga and Jurong, uh, just because 
just in order to go for straight fights with, with the PAP. So this to those of you who think that I'm a spoiler, spoiling the votes of opposition party or an opportunist, these are the facts that you have to consider. And if you still think, after considering these facts, that if you still think that I'm a spoiler and an opportunist, I want to say I'm very sorry. Thank you, GC. Well, Chris, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to clarify the issues that some Singaporeans are concerned with. Thank you very much, Chris.